we've already gone over how to adjust for our horses um, if, it, if necessary, though very few horses actually need much adjustment. But one of the other questions that we often run into is how to adjust for a rider. The beauty of our saddle is that almost everything on it is completely adjustable. We can adjust where the rigging comes out, which is the part that is attached to this D here. We can adjust where our stirrups are, and whether you'd prefer them further forward or further back. And we can adjust where our seat is, how large a seat we want to be sitting in. The saddles tend to run large, and my most common thing is that someone will order a saddle and be surprised how large it is. Um, this is a small, and as you can see, it's not a tiny saddle, it's a substantial saddle and fits the majority of women and quite a few men as well. Um, but it's also completely adjustable with seat size. So we'll start by unbuckling the back buckles. There's a loop that's threaded underneath the, the seat, the panel, you can see there. I've already started with this, so this one's already off. And this is three major back buckles and then the two side buckles. better view here. I'm unbuckled now and the seat itself is simply velcroed on. There's riders that ride with it like that that didn't prefer having the buckles and they've never had any problem with it but we suggest when you're done you rebuckle it. We're going to work the velcro off up to expose our seat wedge. There's a buckle on the seat wedge that we want to unbuckle. Then we're going to gently lift our seat wedge up and remove it. And you can see the holding strap that holds the street seat wedge in place. We always recommend that you keep this seat wedge held in place by that strap. We want to make things as safe as possible. The least, last thing you want is the seat wiggling around. On the underside of the saddle, you can see the adjustment straps. Depending on where you put this wedge, it will depend on how small or how large a saddle is. At its largest setting would be on the outside. For a child, we can actually move it all the way forward. I wouldn't recommend long trail rides like that and simply buckle it down like that. Then you have maybe a 13 inch seat. It's nice if you have grandchildren coming to visit. You just wanna make sure they're a little bit more secure. Okay. So the seat wedge, of course, when we put it back on, we're going to want to put it nice and even. And I always start by threading. I thread the seat wedge through. <laughs> Tenacious Velcro. I thread the seat wedge through and then I place it and make sure there's a line on the middle of the wedge. Make sure that line is lined up, press down, thread it back through the little tab, the keeper tab here, and then buckle it in. It takes about two minutes to change the seat size. And my seat size has been changed. And all I need to do is the final buckling. To me, this always takes a little longer than Buckle those buckles back on. And back on. I love these buckles. You can buckle all kinds of things into the back of the saddle. I buckle my slicker in. I buckle an extra set of reins in. I buckle in a hoof pick. I buckle, buckle in a hoof boot. Depends on how long I'm gone. Sometimes I've even buckled in water bottles. But these buckles will hold things securely for hours and hours with no trouble whatsoever. I've even buckled in things I picked up on the trail just to keep them with me. 
And then our final buckle is this little, little keeper right here. My saddle has been, this, this is a new saddle, but my saddle that I use regularly has been adjusted hundreds and hundreds of times. And it continues to go easily. In fact, I think it gets a little more easy as the leather gets some natural suppleness to it with age. Um, okay, that's how to adjust your seat size.